G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in this video, we're going to look at uh, resharpening carbide inserts for uh, indexable um, tooling. We're just going to look at TCMT um, carbide inserts in this particular video because it's uh, what I use, it's what I'm familiar with. I have got some. Uh, 33 or 35 degree angle ones for profiling as well but primarily this is the best sort of insert to use for a small lathe in my opinion anyway they got a small radius get them with positive rake they don't put a big load on your lathe and uh, yeah get good quality like like this tin coated and uh, they'll last for ages okay so what have I got well 12 mil holder um, TCMT well used and of course being a tight wad um, you want to get as much life out of your inserts as possible because good ones like that are pretty expensive these days it's not worth buying the cheap Indian ones they're just crap um, these will take inter interrupted cuts pretty well but eventually they do chip wear so what do you do well you can regrind them if you've got a green stone and you can regrind them in the hold and just do the faces but you've got the risk of grinding on your insert holder and uh, you know you may want to say reshape it completely and uh, I mean I often use these old inserts I bronze them onto uh, boring bars and stuff like that so I'll grind them to shape roughly before I bronze them and then just finish them off on the boring bar so it's good to be able to do it so yeah if you try grinding them on your holder where well, you risk damaging it so what's and it's you know you can't hold them by hand so what's a good way to do it well I'll show you what I use and uh, yeah it's pretty handy okay well this is it what is it well basically the same sort of principle as lapidaris or you know gem stone workers use you just basically put your uh, insert on the end and then you can hold it turn it move it um, whichever what way and which way and uh, against the grindstone and, and grind to your heart's content very simple setup it's just a screw in the end it's the same screw as you use to hold the insert on and you just uh, put your insert on the end you can put it that way or, or that way and that way you can choose how you want to approach the wheel to grind stuff and uh, yeah just machined up out of some scrap steel it's a uh, four, four mil thread in the end, the same as the little screw that goes in your uh, insert to holder. A bit of knurling on the end. Put a hole through the shaft near the handle, out of the way, so that you're gripping it like this. And the hole's there so that when you put the insert in the end and you tighten it up, you can just put a screwdriver through just to hold it so the whole thing doesn't twist. And... Uh, that's just three sixteenths. There you go. Dead, dead simple, but makes you know makes it quite quite easy to um, to do them off the off the actual holder. All right, I'll put one in. Um, we'll look at an old insert, this one here, and then we'll uh, see how it goes. Here's a good example of an insert that's uh, you know could be ground back. It's had a chip taken out of that point the other two are still unused so what I'll do is I'll just grind a flat on that side where the chip is and that will retain a lot of the uh, profile just round the corner up a little bit and it should be reusable you know um, yeah see how it comes up Right, ready to go. 
the ground job and the profile's you know, approximately around the mark. The, uh, I just rolled over on the edge so you take that real sharp point off. You don't want it dead sharp otherwise that won't be any good. It's going to have just a tiny little roll over on it like the originals and uh, you can also sometimes just grind the end so you get like a, a three-sided point, a chisel point and that works quite well. around the, the radius off on the end a little bit and I think you'd get a, an even better finish. We'll do that. To put a chip breaker on these again what you can do is use a diamond burr, cylinder burr and a pencil grinder just put a little depression at the back of the grind of the um, cut on the head. <laughs> Medium speed in. That's good, that's perfect. You just hear that sounds really good, you know. No no noises. There you go, that was medium. We'll put about on fine. Getting this a bit faster too, but uh, good enough for the demo. That's a bit too light, we're going heavier. Uh, nice and quiet, no noises, a bit of grinding or hissing, but it's, it's not right. Yeah, it's alright. Certainly usable, and uh, I mean, just for roughing up work, they're still quite alright. And, uh, you know, anything really decent will use you your good tips, but yeah, you can get life out of the old girls, and uh, it's just a matter of playing around with the various angles, give them a bit of relief with the uh, with the air grinder at the back, and uh, just try try to you know play around with it, see how you get on. But certainly you can you can get more life out of them, and uh, when you consider what you're paying for these, well, yeah, every little bit helps out. All right, well, there you have it. Hope you found it interesting. It's just another little gadget that you can make up in your spare time. And it just makes it easier, you know, to uh, control stuff, the grinding. I mean, reground inserts are never going to be as good as original, I don't think. Uh, I've regrounded for years, and you get a pretty good finish out of them, but I don't think they're ever up to the standard of fresh ones. Uh, these are obviously made properly to do the job and to try and replicate that tip, the angles, you know, the, the, uh, the rollover circumference, uh, you know, it's pretty difficult when you're doing it freehand and you're working in such small uh, measurements. But anyway, give it a go, uh, you know, it'll save you some money 
not even if you only use them for roughing up, were at least, uh, you know, they're pretty tough and they do the job. Okay, that's it for me. See you next time. Cheers.